and but people have watered it down, uh, won't talk about it. Some that even mention hell, they will tell you that, you know, it's not going to be everlasting fire or torment. In other words, you won't suffer forever. See, and that sounds, you know, to the, when you don't understand God, that sounds kind of cruel that God said he's going to burn you forever. But that's what he's saying. I guess some people thought it was cruel that God said you're going to die the first death because hell is really that we're going to get to is the second death. Some people thought it was cruel that death was even invented, but it was invented by God. We brought it on ourselves by disobeying, but he told you if you disobey, you was going to get death, and we getting death. And death was never meant to be pretty, brothers and sisters. We cannot put a pretty spin on death. So that's why we have to deal with hell the way it is. But it's a lot of confusion. I was dealing with a brother in L.A. a few weeks ago, and he brought up the question in Q&A about uh, scripture we're going to read. And it said, you know, Satan and his angels got kicked out to the earth. So he tried to make something different out of that. So the bottom line, I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, hell is it come in different categories. It's a, it's a condition. So you have to understand. It's just like the word spirit in the Bible. You can read the word spirit. It could be referring to three, four, five different types of spirit. In other words, not the same thing. Like it said, God is a spirit. Then it said angels are spirit. So we can see spirit. It can be referring one place to God. It can be referring to angels. It can even be referring to the breath that's in our nostrils. That's called spirit. Different types of spirit, though. Same thing with hell. Hell is a condition. So everywhere we read hell in the Bible don't mean the same thing. That's one thing we need to understand. It refers to different, but it's always bad. Understand that. But it refers to different bad conditions. Now, the one we're going to ultimately get to and the one we want to avoid with, at all costs, I say is the top of the line hell. That's the one you want to avoid at all costs. And that's why the title is Hell to the Gnaw. <laughs> and most people, you know, we heard, you know, a guy, he made a little, he made a little song about it. And, uh, but the bottom line is, hey, you want to avoid hell, hell fire at all costs. That's what you want to say, hell to the gnaw on hell. And we're going to get into it. Jesus said something because a brother asked me this early in the week. He asked me this. He said, do this really mean we're going to read uh, the first scripture, Mark 9. And we're going to come back to Mark at the end. But we're going to have a full understanding of hell. And not just hell fire. But a brother asked me this early in the week. And this show you. He said, Do this, is this kind of literal? This scripture, this verse right here. Brother Will, matter of fact, asked me that. Brother Will in the sound room. He asked me this. He said, uh, is this verse literal? And we're going to read it. And I can explain it. Uh, Mark 9, verse 47 Hell to the gnaw. Go ahead. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Okay, so now, this is what he, he asked me. He said, well, is this verse literal? Yeah. It's, it, it, see, it show you how serious hell is. And we need to understand it. Now, we got a verse like this in the Bible, and we're going to let some preacher water it down where hell don't mean it's not that bad you know because some people say well you know god wouldn't do that he wouldn't burn you forever what kind of god would burn you forever the one in the bible that's the problem but some people they a lot of these preachers they didn't water it down and that's why people don't have no fear of god and that's why they will keep on about their merry way, which is going to lead them to hell. 
but it's so serious. Read that verse again. This is Jesus talking, brothers and sisters. You got to pay attention. It's so serious. He said, what again? We at Mark 9 and 47. Go ahead. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Now, understand what he's saying here. He is telling us, brothers and sisters, he's, if it would help you to avoid hell, to walk up to a mirror somewhere and pluck your eye out your head, do it. This is what he's saying. He's not playing. That's what he said. He said, and if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye. He said, look, I'm going to give you a scenario. This would be the choice you need to make if you had to make it. Obviously, don't go nowhere and pluck your eye out because that ain't going to be your problem. But what he's telling you is, whatever your problem is, you better get rid of it. Whatever your problem is. So don't know, I don't want nobody to leave or listen on the internet and say, well, maybe I need to plug my eye. No, that ain't going to, that pro, that's not going to do it. But he's making a strong analogy, brothers and sisters. Whatever it takes, hell to the gnaw. You don't want to go there. You don't want to go there. That's what he's saying. That's a strong analogy. Whatever you got to do, do it to keep from going to this place. If thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It's better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye. So if you could, would, would have a choice of making it to the kingdom with one eye or going into hell with two eyes, you better put, get a patch. And get a patch and put it over there and go on in the kingdom. See, it's just an analogy, but he mean it. Because you ain't going to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye. That ain't going to happen. You're going to be whole and perfect. But if that was the case, do it. And we know, brothers and sisters, even in this life, we will cut body parts off. We will let the doctor cut a body part off of us now to save our life in this life. So you know if you do it to save your life in this life, how much more important is the next life? But he's showing you the threat of hell. He's showing you how terrible it is that you got to do this. Let's go to Isaiah 5. But now that's hell fire. Now we're going we gonna to run the gamut and we're going to look at all, you know, various conditions of hell. Because again, like I said, everywhere where you read hell in the Bible, it's not talking about that. It's always bad, but it don't always mean hell fire because some of us going through hell right now, but we not in hell fire. So we got to understand the difference where we want to take things out of context. Uh, Isaiah 5 and 13. Go ahead, my brother. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. See, that's us. That's Israel. We're in captivity to this day. The Bible is accurate. God know the whole story. Talking about a people that gone into captivity and we still in captivity to this day. No coincidence. And it's because we refuse to know and do what God wanted us to do. It's our fault. We can blame white people all we want to. It is our fault. That's where we got to get back to basics. Understand why God did it to us. So he said, for my people are gone into captivity, he said, because they have no knowledge. Go ahead. And their honorable men are famished. And their honorable men are famished. Go ahead. And their multitude dried up with thirst. See, we starving for some knowledge of God, just like this lesson. Don't nobody understand hell. Preachers not preaching about it. They don't even want to talk. They want to tell you, tell you something nice. It's going to be real good. What about when, it don't, when it's not real good? You can't handle that. Because you'd have been sold a pipe dream. But now, he said, we starving for knowledge. We famished and dried up with thirst for knowledge, though. Fourteen. Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself. Wait a minute. Therefore, hell... Hath then lost herself. 
But what is he talking about? Is he talking about hellfire in this condition? No. He told you the situation. We gone into slavery. This is hell for us, though. If you don't understand that the slavery that this people have been in is hell, you need to have your head examined. But it's not the same as hell fire. See, we can get out of this hell, and we're going to get out of it. But once you go to hell fire, there's no coming out of there. That's what you have to understand the difference. Like, we're going to read scripture. People just messed this up. They say, they, they think Jesus went to hell fire and preached to the devils in hell fire. Look, the devil is not in hell fire yet. That's what people don't understand. They say, oh, they messed up scripture. We're going to read in Peter. Brother, brother brought that up to me in L.A. But they had messed it up thinking Jesus went to hell fire somewhere. Nah, when he died, when he died. That's not even what that's talking about. But it says, first he said in Isaiah 5, 13, my people are going into captivity because they have no knowledge. Then verse 14, he said, therefore hell hath enlarged herself. Go ahead. And open her mouth. And open her mouth. Go ahead. Without measure. Why? And their Without glory. measure. And what? And their glory and their multitude and their pomp. And he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. Shall descend into it. In other words, all the good things that we had as a people when we was a great mighty nation, it's in hell. It then went to hell. It then went to hell. Not hell fire, just a terror. We're in a terrible state now as a people. He lets you know where we at. We're in slavery. But now that's one example. Go to uh, Revelation 12. And we're going to look at the devil himself. Because people are confused about this. When they talk about the devil getting kicked out of heaven, we're going to read this. It lets you know exactly where he at. But compared to heaven, it's hell. But is it hell fire? Nope. He's not there yet. Revelation 12 and 7. Go ahead, my brother. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought in his angels. Okay, so it's describing some uh, really above our pay measure, brothers, uh, uh, above our pay grade. Because how do angels fight and make war? Hey, that's beyond me, but the Bible says they do. It was some war in heaven, and the Lord had to have his servant deal with Satan and his followers. But go ahead. And prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. Okay, so now. Michael, he got angels on his side. They fought with the dragon, which is Satan, and he had angels. And, of course, Satan, which is a dragon, he couldn't prevail. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. Now, this is where God dwell. The third heaven. He said, look, in other words, they getting the boot. Go ahead. And the great dragon was cast out. Now, he was cast out. The great dragon is going to give him all his titles. What, what else he, he known by? Go ahead. That old serpent. That old serpent. Oh. Think that's the same one. See, it wasn't a literal snake. God can let a snake talk if he want to, but that's not what happened in the Garden of Eden. It was this guy talking. That old serpent. Go ahead. Called the devil. Called the devil. Okay. And Satan uh -huh. was deceived the whole world. Was deceived the whole world. What happened to him again? He was cast out into the earth. Oh, he was cast out to the earth. That's plain, isn't it? That's plain. He was kicked out into the earth. Not just him, him and his angels. He was cast out into the earth and who? And his angels were cast out with him. And his angels was cast out with him. Skip over to verse 12. Let's reiterate that. Go ahead. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Uh -huh. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. So clearly he here, right? See, growing up, they made you think, well, you know, you, you're going to go to heaven to be with God if you're good. And, you know, and they, they say, which, which is good to put a little fear in people, but they, they, they had the story twisted. Tried to, you know, they tried to scare me with going to hell. You're going to go down under the ground where the devil at. See, and the devil going to get you. That's not how hell works anyway. The devil going to get God in hell. Only thing, you're going to be in some company. Misery love company. That's all you're going to be for him. He going to be suffering. He ain't going to be getting nobody. Once he go to hell fire, but he is yet to go to hell fire now. 
He's not in hellfire. We just saw he got kicked out of heaven to the earth. And he's right now presently on the earth wreaking havoc. Creating all kind of confusion. The Bible says he deceived the whole world, right? So read verse 12. We're Revelation 12 and 12. Go ahead. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Uh-huh. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Why? Go ahead. And of the sea. Uh-huh. For the devil has come down unto you. See, he come down to the earth. And it's woe to the inhabitants of the earth right now, right? Go ahead. Having great wrath. He got great wrath. But for how long? Go ahead. Because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Oh, he not. He ain't going to be doing this forever. Matter of fact, it's telling us he got great wrath because he know he got a short time. He didn't even know how much time he got. He know his time is short. So he's trying to test him up why he got an opportunity because his time is limited. And that's why when Jesus was on the scene, Jesus had them all in check. But they on the earth. That's why Jesus going in the synagogue. Who you find in the synagogue? People possessed with the devil. Jesus going in there kicking, kicking them out. Come out of him. And they even know Jesus and talking to Jesus. Oh, we know you. You the holy one. And then a couple of them said, you read like I think Mark 8. They were saying, speaking through people, they were saying, what you doing here? You come to torment us before the time? Because they know that they going to they gonna put, put the Lord on, on blast about like he going to get them early. You know, like you didn't gave us so much time. That's what it said here. The devil know he got but a short time. But he got some time to do some dirt. But eventually his time going to be up. So what this letting us know, the devil got kicked out of heaven, down to the earth. He's not in hell fire. He got some time before he go to hell fire. Matter of fact, he's not going to hell fire till we get to judgment. The devil down here trying to tempt me and you. He is called the tempter. That's what he's doing now. He, you know, he, he, he working his craft now behind the scenes, but he's still working it. So that's what it's letting us know. That's why I say he got it but a short time. But now this is what tripped people up. Flip over to 2 Peter 2. One verse. 2 Peter 2. We're going to read verse 4. 2 Peter 2. This is what tripped people up. They don't understand how hell refers to different bad conditions in the Bible. We just saw Israel being in captivity because they don't have no knowledge. He said all of their pump and their glory that they had shall ascend. Hell going to open their mouth and all their goodness going to ascend into it. That's just the condition that we're in. It's not hell fire. Every time you read hell in the Bible, it is not referring to hell fire. And we're going to identify, but the, like I said, the top of the line hell, that's the one you want to miss at all costs. That's the one Jesus was talking about in the first verse we read, Mark 9 and 47. So now we at 2 Peter 2, read that verse, verse 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, uh -huh. but cast them down to hell, uh -huh. and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Now, see, this is talking about the same thing we just read. Brother in L.A. was a little confused, tried to say, well, this is talking about some different ones that don't seem like it's the same because they got cast out to the earth, and these got cast to hell. Look, it's only one set of bad angels that got the boot. And they got the boot to the earth. So in this instance, brothers and sisters, it's referring to their condition on earth as a state of hell. Not hell fire, but a condition of hell for them. I guess so. If you leave from heaven where his glory is at and you get the boot from there, anywhere you go is going to be hell compared to that because you're not, you're not in heaven no more. So... It's, but it said, it said, for if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, we read that Satan and his angels got cast down. It told us the earth, but now it's characterizing this condition that they in on the earth as a hell. Cast them down to hell, and then it says something else, and delivered them into chains of darkness. That's why we don't see the devil, but he here. We can't see him. 
If the Lord didn't put him on the chains of darkness, we could see him. He can pop up. Just like we don't regularly, regularly see good angels, but people have saw them because they can show up. So we don't regularly see them, but people have. We got record accounts that people saw them. Hebrews 13 said we should entertain strangers because some entertain angels unaware. So good angels then came and talked to people. Satan can't do that no more because he did it to Adam and Eve and messed them up. So God put them under restrictions. So he working his craft behind the scenes. That's what it means, chains of darkness. But he's right here on the earth. This hell that it's referring to in this case is simply talking about the earth. For if God spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell and delivered them in the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. That, therefore, they in a condition of hell right now waiting on judgment. They still haven't been judged and went to hell fire. Understand what he's saying here. They went to hell fire. They in this condition right here on the earth, which he called hell, waiting on judgment. Or as it said in Revelation 12, wait knowing that he got a short time. That's where he at. Now go to the next one, 1 Peter 3. This is the one they mess up. Back up a couple of pages, 1 Peter 3. See, they messed this one up terribly. Because they don't understand how this thing works. So the hell we all want to avoid at all costs that Jesus was referring to. That's the one often or when it do refer to it sometime as hell fire. That's the one that's called hell fire. That's the one we want to avoid at all costs. We can be in a bad predicament that's characterized as hell right now. We can be in a bad state. This world is in hell right now. This world is in turmoil all over. It's hell, but it's not hell fire. That's why I said you think it's bad now. Hey, you end up in hell fire, you're going to know what bad is. That's the top of the line hell. That's the one you want to miss. That's the one you want to say hell to the gnaw to. But now, 1 Peter 3 and 18. 1 Peter 3 and 18. Go ahead. For Christ also hath once suffered for sin. That's right. Go ahead. The just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the spirit. Yeah, see, Christ, he was just and we unjust. So he suffered for us. He was the just, suffering for the unjust. Go ahead. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Oh, by which also he went and preached, it said, to the spirits in prison. I think we missed some. So it said, for Christ also at once suffered for sin, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Read the end of that verse again. 7 to 18. Read 18. Right. Just read again. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. And what happened to him? Being put to death in the flesh. Jesus got put to death in the flesh as a flesh and blood man. Go ahead. But quickened by the spirit. But quickened by the spirit. That means he died a flesh and blood man. But he came back to life a spirit being. That's what happened. He was made alive. That's what quickened me. By the spirit. That's what God is. God is a spirit. See, we flesh. That's why we die. We trying to become spirit. That's what we working on. And if we overcome, that's what will happen. But now, nah, go ahead. 19. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. This is what I wanted to get to. This is what they mess up. They said, see, it said, by which also he went and preached to the spirits in prison. So people said, oh, so what happened is, because it, refer it was referring to Jesus' death at first. But see, the Lord, the Lord take you wherever he wants you to go. He can, he can jump back a thousand years in one verse, just like that. So he take you wherever he wanted to take you to show you something. So verse 18, it said, for Christ also have once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the spirit. He came back to life as a spirit. Then when it said, by which also he went and preached to the spirits in prison, it's not referring to that he did that while he was dead. See, this is where people misconstrue one verse. 
Because that's what people say. Oh, see, see, when Jesus died, see, he died, and they be throwing words out there. See, he went to Hades, or he went to Sheol. Or do, they just come up with stuff. But what they really trying to say is that this bad doctrine says that when Jesus died, he went to this place of hell where Satan is held at in, uh, uh, in, in, you know, in this place of torment and preached to them. First of all, Satan is not in the hell that he going to be in, hell fire. He's on the earth. Second of all, when Jesus died, he didn't preach to nobody. He was asleep. It's not talking about when he died, but all we got to do is read a little further. We got to let the Bible explain itself instead of trying to explain it. Let the Bible explain itself. So what it's really telling us, brothers and sisters, is about something long ago. The only thing it's comparing is him being a spirit being again because Jesus didn't start flesh and blood. He was a spirit being. He became a flesh and blood. He reduced himself. He was in, in, planted in Mary, born a flesh and blood man. So he was God in the beginning, became a man, and he died, and he went back to being God, went back to being a spirit being when he came out the grave. But he had to come out the grave. So the only thing it's saying is it told you at verse 18 he was put to death in the flesh and quickened by the spirit by which also, by which also what? By which also he went. No, no, by which also, by which spirit, that spirit body that he had when he came out the grave, he inhabited that again because he had it prior. So when it say, he was quickened by the spirit. Then it said, by which also he went and preached to the spirits in prison. When did that happen? We're going to see now. Verse 20. Which sometime were disobedient. Now it's explaining it. All you got to do is read it. They was these spirits in prison, which again, it, it is Satan and his angels. But where they in prison at, brothers and sisters, on the earth? When he preached to them, we're going to see in a second. Which sometime were disobedient. When? When once the long suffering of God waiting at waiting in the days of Noah. Wait a minute. In the days of Noah? See, this talking way before. It's only telling us that Jesus was a man. He died. He went back and became a spirit being, by which also when he was a spirit being, he had preached to these spirits in prison back in the day. See, Jesus was God. He was controlling things from day one. He was in the beginning saying the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Referring to Jesus. So it explained when he preached to these spirits in prison. Which sometimes were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. It get real specific to what? While the ark was a preparing. While the ark was preparing. Go ahead. We're in few that is. Eight souls were saved by water. It took you all the way back there because, see, God worked with these evil angels. He let them do the dirt that he, that he need done. So when man got ugly, like it tell you, you can read Psalm 78 on your own. This is an example. In Psalm 78, it said all the drama that God brought on Egypt because he wanted to punish Pharaoh for what they did to Israel. All the drama that God brought on, it said he sent that drama by sending evil angels among them. That's how he did it. And that's how God always do it. Since they want to do some dirt and God say you deserve some dirt done to you, he let them do it to you. That's what he did. That's, he had them flood the earth. But evidently, they get, they get a little anxious like they was telling Jesus, what you doing here? You trying 20 minutes before the time when he was a flesh and blood man. So evidently, something was happening when the ark was preparing. That's what it just said, right? When eight souls were saved by water. That, but that's what it's saying when he preached to them in prison. It gave you the specific time frame. It, it even told you the ark was being prepared. So it seems to me that, hey, they, they was trying to be a little quick with destroying things. 
And he had to tell him to shut up like he often do. Like when he was a, a man and he came up on them and they run in their mouth, shut up. Come out of him. Then they asked him, can we go in the swine one time? Go. Hey, they obey him. They even obey his servants. They was obeying Paul. Then these wicked men tried to tell him, cast him out. Hey, they couldn't handle him. But the bottom line is this has nothing to do with Jesus dying and going somewhere. It went all the way back to the days of Noah. So that's when he preached to the spirits in prison. Go to uh, Jonah 2 now. So when it say Satan was cast down and his angels were cast down to hell, brothers and sisters, it is referring to the earth. Satan is not in hell fire yet. So we got to understand first and foremost that hell mean, is referring to different categories in the Bible. It's not always hell fire. It'll get specific when it tells you about hell fire though. And like I say, you can be going through hell right now, but thank God you're not in hell fire and do everything you can to avoid it. Jonah. Two and one. Jonah two and one. This is going to bring us back to Jesus because Jesus used Jonah as an example. So we just seeing. Hell means different things in the Bible. It's not always the same, referring to the same location. Jonah two and verse one. Go ahead. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. Now, Jonah, some people find this hard to believe. Look, God got so many creatures it'll make your head spin. Great, huge creatures. Right now. So it tell you that a whale swallowed Jonah up. Some people, how can a whale do it? Look, that ain't nothing for God. He didn't created some great creatures. So I believe it because I believe the Bible. And so it's telling you that Jonah got swallowed up by this whale, by this fish. And while he was in the fish, hey, the Lord didn't even let the fish hurt him. He just swallowed him up whole. And while he was in the fish, he was cognizant and ended up praying to the Lord. So Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God, out of the fish's belly. Go ahead. And said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. Uh -huh. And he heard me. And he heard me. Go ahead. Out of the belly of hell cried I. And thou heardest my voice. Wait a boy. minute. I, wait, he was in the belly of hell. What do it mean? It's just referring to where he at, the, the fish's belly. So is that what we got to all worry about going to? We going to get swallowed by a big fish when we go to hell? No. This is just showing you the condition that Jonah was in was a condition of hell. Not hell fire. That's something else. So Jonah been to hell, but he ain't been to hell fire. Jesus preached to the spirits in prison or in hell. That was referring to the earth because they got cast down to hell. That's the condition they in compared to being in heaven. Israel, all their glory and pomp descended into hell. That's when the Lord kicked us out the promised land and we went to slavery. All these are conditions of hell. But the one Jesus said, pluck your eye out so you don't go to that's hell fire. That's the top of the line hotel or hell. That's the one you don't want to deal with at all. So it said, he cried by reason of affliction unto the Lord, and the Lord heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. Verse 3. For thou hast cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the floods can pass me about. All thy billows and thy waves passed over me. So that's where he is. He, he, he under the water in the fish's belly. That's what that's the hell he in in this situation. Go ahead. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. Hey, he still has some faith in God. Toward thy holy temple. That's where we got enough faith to know, even though we in hell, our condition, we pray toward Jerusalem, toward that holy temple where it was. And he's going to have it built. After these, after these crazy people build one for the, for the uh, man of sin. But 
That's how important that is. He said, I'm going to pray towards our holy temple. Now, go to Matthew 12. I'm going to show you another reason why I know what happened to Jonah is true. Even if I had some doubt. That's how you know, too, the Lord give you confirmation on things. Jesus not quoting nothing that's not uh, legitimate. Matthew 12 and 38. Go ahead. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we will see a sign from thee. See, they want to see a sign, but they really don't. They just tempting them because he's been giving them signs. He's been doing all kind of miracles. So it's like putting them on the spot. They don't believe in him. Well, show us something. Do, do something. Like they're going to put, look, I ain't got to do nothing for you. I'm doing it anyway. You done seen stuff I done. I'm not going to. At your request, I'm not going to do nothing. Believe the scripture is really what Jesus is letting these people know. Be looking for me to just do a sign because you say so. And in actuality, it, it lets you know they didn't want to, they didn't believe, they didn't really want to see a sign. They want to come against him no matter what. Like we had people say something similar to that. You know, years ago, brother told me, you know, church he was going to. They was, uh, you know, he started listening to us, listening to the word. And the church he was going to, he was talking to a few people, and they were saying to him, well, you know, uh, well, what, what, you know, you talking about these people over there, supposed to have to work, what they doing over there? What they got over there? A little, a little handful of people, they ain't doing nothing, you know. They casting out devils, what they doing over there? You know, that's coming to him like that. Because... He got enough sense to get away from their crazy self knowing they wasn't teaching the word, but they going to kind of try to criticize, hey, how you know what we doing? You ain't been here. But he tried to, you know, put it down like they ain't really doing nothing over there. So they tried to put Jesus on the spot. They really didn't believe. That's why I said, they said certain other scribes, and Pharisees came, answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign of thee. Jesus knew where they was coming from. So what did he say? 39. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. See, just see, for you to need a sign from God when you got the word telling you all the signs you need to know, showing you things. It's like we got signs today. We got signs of what the Lord gave us, how it's going to be at the end of the world, and we see the things happening. We don't need to be sitting in our bedroom and say, Lord, send me a special sign. Let the star out there wink at me. I'm going to look out the sky. Can you let it wink for me? You, you got the signs you need. You see it. I know sometimes we get a little carried away and we might try to ask the Lord. And the Lord will show you sometime. The Lord will show you some, some bonus. Because I didn't seen that. But really what he's saying, you shouldn't even need it. You shouldn't need it. Jesus told a guy he actually tried to heal his son in John 4. Read that on your own. John 4, the guy said, you know, I think it's his son or a servant. Heal him. And, uh, Jesus said, look, except you see signs and wonders, you won't believe. You think that's what it's about? So that's what his response is here. And even an adulterous generation seeketh out the sign. You shouldn't really need no sign to believe in God. God showed you a sign at his own choosing. So now, what I'm going to show you all, go ahead. And there shall no sign be given to her, but the sign of the prophet Jonah. See, he said, the only sign I'm going to give you is the sign of the prophet Jonah. You want a sign, I'm going to give you a big sign. But it's not. See, they wanted some big miracle, you know, like him to open somebody's eyes right then. You know, open somebody, a, a, a deaf person, ears. They wanted something like that. He said, nah, I'm not going to give you that. The one major sign I'm going to give you that you better believe is the sign of the prophet Jonas. What is that? We just read Jonas. What is that? Verse 40. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly. Oh, so that's even the time frame. Let me tell you that in Jonah too. We didn't read. Jonah was three days and three nights. Literally. He got real specific. Three days and three nights in the whale's belly. So this is the sign he's going to give you about himself, just like Jonah. See, this is why I say this. Is how I know, hey, what we read about Jonah, hey, Jesus is verifying it, isn't he? 
He's verifying it. As Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, or as we also read in the belly of hell. He was in the belly of hell. Not hell fire, but he was in a condition or a state. You find yourself in a whale's belly, you're going to say, I'm in hell. That's terrible. But it can always be worse. So as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so what? So shall the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So shall the son of man. Talking about himself. Jesus himself. This is the sign he gave him. Be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. That's referring to his grave. See, a lot of times the Bible just said three days. It's going to be three days. But the Lord knew people was going to try to mess it up. So he got specific and had an example of a prophet to even back up how specific he was. Because it tells you that about Jonas. He got real specific. So you cannot be tricked. So I don't go from Friday evening to Sunday morning, Good Friday to Easter Sunday, saying Jesus was in the ground, buried. No, that's not three days and three nights. He got specific here. This is the one sign that he gave to prove who he is, that he the one. They wanted something else. They wanted some, some, you know, some great stuff right then. But, hey, ain't, that's real great right there. You ain't heard of no man walking around going to tell you before it happened, look, I'm going to die, I'm going to be asleep three days and three nights, and then I'm going to get up. Hey, that's a sign for you, isn't it? If I could tell y'all that, hey, y'all need to bow down and worship me. But, hey, I can't tell you nothing like that. I hope the Lord wake me up whenever it get to that point, and I know I can't say it's going to be no three days and three nights. So, hey, that's a sign for you, right? He done told the people, look, just like Jonah's in the, in the bells, well, he gave you an example, three days, three nights. I'm going to be in the grave, heart of the earth, for three days and three nights. But it brings us back to our previous point, brothers and sisters. That's where Jesus was when he was dead. He what? He didn't go off nowhere like people try to make you think. Oh, he went down and talked to some people. He went over. He was asleep. He was in the grave. That's what happened to dead folks. They don't go nowhere. He was literally dead for three days and three nights. And after it was over with, he woke up. The, the father woke him up. He came out. Wasn't no good Friday to uh, Sunday morning. We know. We got a lesson to tell you. It was Wednesday night to Saturday night. By the time they got there Sunday morning, he was up. That's why when they got there, it was still dark Sunday morning, the first day of the week, Matthew 28. The angel said, he gone. Because he had been gone since the nighttime. Because he had to be in that equal amount of days and night. And people would try to mess that up. People come up with some new math and everything. They messed that up. They be talking about, well, you know, it, they didn't count like that back then. You know, it was really just a day. It was really a day and a half. How the heck you going to get a day and a half from three days and three nights? But it show you how Satan want to destroy what God is telling you to believe in. So he come against it. Now, let's go to uh, Psalm 16. Because we're going to dwell on that for a minute. Because Jonas said, he was in the belly of hell when he was in the whale's belly. Well, that, that's the same thing when Jesus was in that grave for three days and three nights. Hey, that's hell. See, that's a condition of hell. That's what the Bible referred to repeatedly as hell. And we think it's going to hell fire. See, this why this another reason why they say that Jesus went to, went to hell. When he died, meaning like the lake of fire somewhere and talked to Satan and, and his angels. Because when he died, he did go to hell, but that's just the grave. That's a condition of hell. Death itself is a condition of hell. The grave is called hell. Is that hell fire? Nope. That's not it. See, we all got that hell coming. 
But the one that we want to miss at all costs, Jesus said, if you got to pluck your eye out your head, that's hell fire. That's the hell to the gnaw on that one. But now, Psalm 16 and verse 8. Jesus was buried for three days and three nights. He knew it back here. He talking about it back here. Go ahead. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. Uh -huh. My flesh also shall rest in hope. You know, like uh, people say this all the time when somebody die. They say R.I.P., right? Rest in peace. Where it's telling you that right here. See, he's telling you from the standpoint why he's still alive. That, look, I'm going to die, but I know I'm coming up. See, that's what gives you some hope when you die and you know it can, you, you're going to rest in peace because you ain't going to know nothing anyway. But the thing is having some hope when you die. See, once you know the Lord and you serving the Lord, hey, we don't have to fear death like the average person because even though it's, 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 it is death, you're going to be gone. You're going to be no more for that time period. You got hope of being awakened in the resurrection. Not that I'm not. See, I don't have hope that, you know, death, not really death. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disappear and float up to heaven. No, I don't have hope in that. I got hope that when I do die, the Lord, that time come for me, that the Lord going to wake me up at a later date. That's what this, the Lord had hope in here. He said, therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. Let's see, go ahead. For thou will not leave my soul in hell. Wait a minute. See, people don't understand all of these conditions that we touching on thus far, these conditions of hell, they are only temporary. The one that's permanent is hell fire. All these other ones, even the grave is temporary. We know it was temporary for Jesus. He wasn't there but for three days and three nights. It was temporary for Jonah because he was in the whale's belly for three days and three nights. He was in the belly of hell. But once he came out of there, he wasn't in that hell no more. So he said right here, <clears throat> For thou would not leave my soul in hell. People say, well, the soul don't die. Sound like somebody's soul died and went to hell here, right? That's what it said, right? But it's not talking about hell fire. And you can. That's going to happen to some people. But the difference is, brothers and sisters, you won't come back from that one. That's the scary thing about that one. That's where you, we, we need to have some fear about God. You will not come back from hell fire. That is eternal. That's what's scary. And I know God is going to do it because he did. He brought the first death and hell on man. Fortunately, he made a way for us to come back from the first death and hell. But the second death and hell, that's permanent. That's eternal. And it's pain for that, that time. So we had, uh, we had Psalm 16 and verse 10. Read it again. For thou would not leave my soul in hell. For thou would not leave my soul in hell. This is Jesus talking before he died. Well, he knew he wasn't going to leave his soul in hell. This hell just mean the grave because he said he was going to be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. Go ahead. Neither would thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. See, and that's why he couldn't stay longer than three days and three nights. Because once you get past three days and three nights, that's when it's known that decay to the body starts setting in. So he didn't even get to, he didn't stay in the grave long enough to start rotting and decaying and corrupting. Skin dropping off of him, even though he came up in the mortar anyway, but he didn't stay long enough for that practice to set in. He said, thou would not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. His body didn't even start to rot. He was up so quick. Go ahead. Thou will show me the path of life, and thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Now that's Jesus talking, but he's talking through the mouth of David. What did he say? He said, 
uh, my flesh going to rest in hope, right? For thou will not leave my soul in hell. Neither would thou suffer thy holy one to seek corruption. But let's make sure. See, that's why we got other scriptures. We can let it explain itself instead of trying to explain it without understanding. So let's go. We're going to come back. Put a marker here in uh, Psalm. We're going to come back in a second. Go to uh, Acts 2. And we're going to come back to Psalm 30, actually. We're going to go to Psalm 30 when we come back. But we're going to read Acts 2 right now. And we're going to get some understanding of this. See who flesh was resting in hope. Because David was talking, but it was the Lord speaking through David, brothers and sisters. Who flesh rested in hope. Whose soul was not left in hell. But that lets you know somebody's soul went to hell. Acts 2 and 22. Acts 2 and 22. Go ahead, my brother. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Now, Peter is talking to these people on Pentecost. So he about to break, break, break something down to them about Jesus because they didn't really understand Jesus yet. The majority of these people here, they say, ye men of Israel, Jesus of Nazareth. That's where he was known as. He was from Nazareth. He was approved of God by you, miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves also know. 23. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. Ye have taken, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. See, that's what people need to understand. People always say, well, Jesus died for my sins. He died for my sins. Look, he did die, but some wicked people killed him. If you understand that dynamic, you will understand God's relationship with, with this world and where you stand, that you stand in jeopardy to be killed in this world for doing right. Because that's why Jesus got killed. Now, God had a big plan. That's how God is. He's going to bring some good out of the evil that people are doing. That's why the Bible tells us plainly. That's why you don't have to sweat the small thing. The Bible said all things work together for, for what? For good. To who? To them who, are, who love God and are the called according to his purpose. So it's going to work out. But it could be, it can, it can be some bad stuff on the surface. Jesus being crucified, nailed to a tree, turned out to be the best blessing for us. But they did it wickedly. That's what it said. It said 23, him being delivered. Jesus got delivered by what? By the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. In other words, it was planned from day one. Then he said. Ye have taken, they took Jesus, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. So now, he got killed. But we're not going to stop at him getting killed because we know he can't stay dead. Go ahead. Whom God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death. Of course, the Lord raised him up. Jesus said he wasn't going to be in the grave number three days and three nights just like Jonah was in the well. Go ahead. Because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. 25. For David speaketh concerning him. Oh, David speaketh concerning Jesus. That's who he's talking about. Where at? We just read it in Psalm 16. That was David speaking concerning the Lord. It wasn't David speaking about himself. It was really Jesus speaking through the mouth of David. It was about Jesus. For David speaking concerning him. What? I foresaw the Lord always before my face, uh -huh. for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Exactly what we read in Psalm 16. David was talking about the Lord. Go ahead. What else? Therefore did my heart rejoice uh -huh. and my tongue was glad. Uh -huh. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. Sound familiar, don't it? Yep. My flesh shall rest in hope. David talking about Jesus' resurrection, no, his death and his resurrection. Back in Psalm 16. That's why people don't understand this Bible is airtight. You can't get around this. It's air. People want to take half. Oh, I'm a New Testament Christian. You nothing. I'm an Old Testament Hebrew. I don't believe the New Testament. You nothing. This whole thing go together. Go ahead. Because thou will not leave my soul in hell. Oh, exactly what we read. Because 
thou would not leave my soul in hell. But what is that not leaving his soul in hell referring to leaving his body in the grave? That's all. Because we are all souls. So when we, whatever happened to us has happened to a soul. You get killed, a soul just got killed. Now the difference is you got an immortal soul or body that they can't do nothing. Can't nobody do nothing with that. That's what people get confused about soul and body. Look, it just really, he's dealing with different body. We got this flesh and blood body, it's called us, and we a soul. Well, we also, God got a spiritual body prepared for. That's the one can't nobody touch. That's why you don't have to fear so much what happened in this body because God got something else. That's the one that's going to go to hell fire. This body wouldn't last in hell fire. But in this case, he's talking about the grave. He said, thou would not leave because thou would not leave my soul in hell. Neither what? Neither would thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. So he quoted Psalm 16. But not better than that, or added to that, I'm going to say, Peter, just in case you missed it, Peter going thoroughly break it down some more explain this thing to us verse 29 uh, um, 28. 28 go ahead thou hast made known to me the ways of life mm -hmm. thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance mm -hmm. men and brethren let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David see Peter go explain it now he said okay I just told you David was telling you about Jesus death and resurrection so let me let me make it plain let me tell you about David himself, the patriarch David. Go ahead. That he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Okay, so he said, look, let me explain something to you about David. Let me explain it to you. David couldn't have been talking about himself. You know why? Because he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher, his grave, is still here today. We can go tell you where David laying at. So the point is David wasn't referring to himself. He, that was about Jesus, who is no longer dead and buried. They can't tell you where Jesus' grave at. Go ahead. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Mm -hmm. He, seeing this, therefore, spake of the resurrection of Christ, mm -hmm. that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. See, he's seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ that his soul was not left in hell so where was his soul at the grave so my point is this is a condition of hell it's still not hell fire but it's hell that's why in the end see if you don't understand this certain things that never make sense to you when we gonna get the revelation in a little bit you gonna read it said Hell going to be cast in the hell. <laughs> You'd be like, well, how hell going in the hell? Because when, it, when it's all over with, all terrible stuff going to be in one place. Hell fire. That's going to be, everything going to be relegated there. Everything that's not right. So he's seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ that his soul was not left in hell, neither what? Neither his flesh did see corruption. Uh-huh. This Jesus have God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. That's right. Now back to Psalm. Back to Psalm 30, because he, he made it a little plain here. So much for the soul can't die and go to hell. We just saw Jesus died, soul died, and went to hell, but it's only talking about the grave. And he came, he came up from hell. 30 and 1. Psalm 30 and 1. Go ahead. I will extol thee, O Lord, uh -huh. for thou hast lifted me up and has not made my foes to rejoice over me. That's right. Go ahead. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. That's right. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Uh -huh. Thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Oh, now it's a little more clear. It was called in the grave hell. We're not leaving soul in hell. But now I refer to it in the other terminology. You brought up my soul from the grave. Because that's all it's referring to. 
but it used hell because hell is any bad condition. And that's a pretty bad condition when, when you dead and buried. That wasn't meant to be pretty. That's what's amazing. We, people die every day and we bury them and we lie to ourselves and say they somewhere else. And you didn't bury them, you ain't seen them went nowhere, but that's a big lie from Satan to make you think death not really death, so you don't have no, you don't really give it the weight that you need to give it, so you get your act together with God. Yeah, death is death. It wasn't meant to be pretty. You die and you go to the grave and you wait there until the resurrection. That's the only way out of that hell, through the resurrection. Jesus did it after three days and three nights. Lord willing, we're going to do it at the second coming of Jesus, those that have done his will. Let's look at it. Go to uh, Daniel 12. Daniel 12. So we're seeing hell is the uh, uh, various, it refers in the Bible, various bad conditions. Captivity for Israel, hell. Jonah in the whale's belly, hell. Jesus in the grave, or anybody else in the grave for that matter, that's hell. But the one we want to avoid, hell fire. That's the one we want to avoid. Daniel 12 and 1. Some people, they was, they was tripping, I know it's tripping off my titles. This wasn't them Nehemiah titles. Daniel 12 and, and 1. Daniel 12 and 1. Go ahead. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. Now this is at the end. Coming soon, too. Michael going to stand up. The same one kicked Satan out long ago. Go ahead. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. Uh -huh. And at that time thy people shall be delivered. Every one that shall be found written in the book. See, that's that great tribulation. And then we got down to the resurrection. He going to bring us at verse 2. Go ahead. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Mm -hmm. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Oh, now he said, look, many of them. See, at the end. See, this is how you know, brothers and sisters, that don't nobody die and go to nowhere, to no perspective place. That don't happen. You die and you go, you wherever they buried you at. But the good news is God, he going to wake everybody up from their perspective play. He got that power. See, Jesus only slept for three days and three nights. We got to sleep much longer than that. Everybody else who died sleep longer than that generally. And, but they will be awakened and everybody not going to be awakened is not going to be good. Because if that was the case, if it was going to be good for everybody, we wouldn't have this other hell that we got to talk about, the top of the line hell. We wouldn't be able to talk about that, but that's the hell to the gnaw. That's the one you want to avoid. You want to avoid that one. You can go to the grave. That's been given. It says given a man wants to die. And after that, the the judgment. So you get, you we end up dying going to the grave. That's hell, but we coming up out of that hell. But then, depending on what you did when you was living on in this life, in this possibly condition of hell, that's going to determine where you're going to be forever, for eternity. So what it say here, verse 2, and many of them that sleep at this time, it's referring to at the end, Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to shame. Some, I'm sorry. Some to everlasting life. And some to shame and everlasting contempt. Brothers and sisters, see, this is why we're talking about this lesson today. We're dealing with this bad condition of hell in all its aspects because we can't ignore it. See, he didn't just say right here, at verse 2, it's good. You know, we got lessons on dealing with getting eternal life and how glorious God's kingdom going to be. We got lessons on that. But we cannot always focus on 
the good side of things. We need to know about the bad side too. We need to know it all. It's in here. So he did not just say at verse 2. Read it one more time. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life. Notice, some. He didn't say all, right? So we can't stop at the end of that phrase and say, oh, we just going to get everlasting life. That's it. We ain't got to worry about nothing else. No, you need to know and be concerned about something else to make sure you do get everlasting life because everybody not going to get it. Some to everlasting life. What about some others? Go ahead. And some to shame and everlasting contempt. And some coming back to shame. And how long contempt? Everlasting contempt. See, this is the one you got to avoid. Somebody going to be there, though. This is the sad thing about it. Somebody there. Just make sure it's not you. This is what you got to do. Let's go further. Let's look at it. Go to John 5. Just show you again, Old Testament, New Testament, saying the same thing. That was Daniel. This is Jesus. Jesus knew and quoted, said the same thing Daniel said. God going to wake everybody up. It's going to come a time. Everybody going to get woke. Awoke from the grave, which is, by the way, a condition of hell. Everybody going to get awakened from that hell. Some going to the top of the line hell after that, though. We want to be the ones going to everlasting life in the kingdom. Some going to the one that Jesus said, you need to pluck your eye out to stop from going there. If that is, if that is stop it, do it. That's what Jesus said. That means whatever you got to do, you got to do it to avoid this. 5 and 28. John 5 and 28. Go ahead, my brother. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Oh, see? That all that's in the grave, or we can say hell, right? Because we concluded that the Bible refers to the grave as a condition of hell. That's why Jesus was buried for three days and three nights, but he knew his soul wasn't going to be left in hell, the grave. He knew he was coming up from that hell. See, nobody has went to hell fire yet. Satan is not in hell fire. Neither has any person died and went to hell fire. That won't be introduced until the Lord come back. And we're going to see it specifically. So, but Jesus said, don't worry, don't, don't, don't think that's big. Marvel not this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Until the hour will come, though, brothers and sisters, where are all that have died at? In the grave. They didn't go nowhere. They're not smiling down. That's amazing. People say, you know. At a funeral, or sometimes somebody died. Oh, they smiling down, looking on things. They never even really pay attention that when something bad happened, hey, they wouldn't be smiling then. Bad stuff happened to people, loved ones, after they die and leave. They wouldn't be smiling. Then when something like that happened, they, why? It's, it's, I, it's real fascinating that they don't even put them in heaven when they mention something bad. They smiling down on the good stuff, something bad, they say, oh, he's turned over in their grave. Wait a minute. How are they smiling now when the good stuff happens? They jump in places. They go up there to smile. They go back in the grave, turn over when the bad stuff happens. Let's show you how crazy it is. We all confused. No, they not smiling or turning over. They are asleep. They resting until the resurrection. That's what he said. The hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and what 29 and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life see unfortunately that verse don't end there that would be good see if that verse ended there i wouldn't be talking about and that's all the verses ended like that i wouldn't be talking about nothing negative because it wouldn't be nothing negative to talk about right but since the lord gonna tell me the whole story i need to tell people the whole story right Lord didn't stop that verse right there. Just like it didn't stop in Daniel where he said, 
some that sleep in the dust, they going to awake to everlasting life. He went further to say, but some going to wake to everlasting shame and contempt. And that's not nice at all. That's not pretty. Shame and contempt. And, 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 and that makes it sound, that, that makes it sound better than it really is. But go ahead, finish that verse. And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Oh, so it's predicated on your actions here and now. But they that have done good, God going to call them back from the grave. They are going to receive everlasting life, the resurrection of life. They will be resurrected to life. And they that have done evil, they coming back to the resurrection of damn it. That's a, that's a shame that you going to be dead, sleep, and God going to wake you up to damn you. That's rough. That show you the Lord not playing. And, and people lie and say, well, you know, God ain't going to punish you forever. If he wasn't, it wouldn't, wouldn't be no need to wake you up, right? Why he going to wake you up to punish you forever and he's going to go back to sleep? That's what people say. He's he just going to go back to sleep. And, and some people say, well, it's going to be fire, but it's just going to last a moment and you're going to be burned up. Look, it's not the type of fire we know. This some burning bush fire. Yeah, that's what Moses stopped to see that fire. Moses said, wait a minute. This one, this one, I ain't never seen no fire like this. This bush is on fire. It's burning, but the bush not getting burned up. That's the type of stuff the Lord is talking about. So you're going to feel the fire all the time, forever. That's terrible. No wonder Jesus said, Whatever you got to do, don't, 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 don't go to that place. If you got to walk around with a patch on your eye, that's what you need to do. That's what he's telling you. So we, we read here in John 5, 29, one more time, Jesus said, they're going to hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. That's Hell to the gnaw. That's the one you don't want to go to. Psalm 86. Psalm 86. That's the top of the line hell. See, we didn't look at hell in all in different aspects, but now we at the ultimate hell. Top of the line or the, which, however you want to characterize, bottom of the line. Really, that's, that's more like it. Bottom of the line, hell. Psalm 86 and 11. Go ahead. Teach me thy way, O Lord. That's what we need. We need to learn what the Lord wants us to know. Notice he said, teach me. He didn't say, make me feel good. Teach me your way, O Lord. We need to be taught. Go ahead. I will walk in thy truth. And we need to do something once we learn it. We need to not just be a hearer of the word, but a doer, right? Go ahead. Unite my heart to fear thy name. Uh-huh. I will praise thee, O Lord, my God. That's right. With all my heart, and I will glorify thy name forevermore. Go ahead. For great is thy mercy toward me. Uh-huh. And thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. Oh, for great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. See, that's the one you, you, want, you want to get delivered from. You want to make sure. See, we can go through all kind of bad conditions while we live it. Even after we die, we could be in the grave, but we don't want to deal with that hell fire. So somebody said, thou has delivered my soul from the lowest hell. That in itself letting you know hell come in different degrees, don't it? You don't say the lowest hell unless it's some other thing conditions of hell right which we just saw but now let's go further go to uh revelation 2 revelation 2 because see we got hell the grave that comes upon us when due to death the wages of sin is death death is passed on all men so we've been dying 
and we get buried generally, and they call that hell. That's the condition of hell. But notice, that's not it. We didn't read about already being awakened from that sleep or that hell, and some people getting everlasting life, but we got to look at the other side too. Some people getting everlasting shame and torment, everlasting shame and contempt, or everlasting damnation. Some people getting that. So we need to understand that. He's going to tell you a little bit more about it. Revelation 2, and we got one verse, and uh, read it. Verse 11. Revelation 2, then we're going to move on to Revelation 20, and we're going to wrap this lesson up. 2 and 11, go ahead. He that, ha he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Mm -hmm. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Notice it's predicated on your actions, like Jesus said in uh, Matt, John uh, 5, 28 and 29, about the hour going to come. You're going to hear his voice. All in the grave going to hear his voice. They that have done good. That's the key. That show you it's important what you do right now. People say, you ain't got to do nothing. Just believe on Christ. No, he said, they that have done good. If you believe on Christ, you're going to have some works to go with your faith. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life. They that have done evil, we can't leave that out, unto the resurrection of damnation. That's what he said. But now we're getting another name for it. He's calling it here. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. He that overcometh, you got to overcome. And if you do it, you straight. No worries. But if you don't, it's something else waiting. But if you do it, he that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Oh, it's a second death, huh? That's right. And it's worse than the first. See, we can come out of the first death, brother and sister. We are going to come out of the first. Everybody that ever was born going to come out of the first death. You're going to get awakened from that death. But what really matters is where you end up after that. That's what matters. And that's why he said, won't be hurt of the second death. That means it's going to hurt, right? And I'm telling you, the Bible telling you it's going to hurt forever. But it's the second death. See, but this just like Satan and these preachers working for Satan, they have watered down death period. They watered down the first death, so I'm not surprised that they have watered down the second death. Oh, he wouldn't burn you forever. What kind of God would burn you for all eternity? God is not that. How the heck are you speaking for God? The Bible telling you what God going to do. He's not playing. And he gave you a choice to avoid it or not. And he knows some people are not going to make the right choice. Hey, that's his business. How God said, you say, why well, God said, look, ask him when you see him. Just make sure you're not speaking from hell. Let's go to uh, Revelation 20. Revelation 20. So now, We've been reading all along that it's going to come a resurrection of good and bad. Everybody going to get what they got coming. And that's going to take place at Judgment Day. So let's read about it. Remember, even when we read about them angels, it said they was under chains of darkness until, until Judgment. This is when they're going to get this. Revelation 20 and 11. Go ahead. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. Uh -huh. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. Oh, now the dead came back like we have been reading all along. See, everybody that's sleep in the graves that's dead, got the first death, they're going to come back. That means they don't die and go nowhere. They wait there until they come back. So now this is judgment day. He said, I saw a great white throne, him to settle from whose face the heaven and earth fled, earth and heaven fled, and there was no place for them. 
And then verse 12 said, and I saw the dead, small and great. Don't matter what your status was in life, big shot, little shot, it don't matter. You coming back to answer to God. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Go ahead. And the books were open. And the books were open. Go ahead. And another book was open, which is the book of life. Uh huh. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. God is he, he meticulous. He got books and everything for you. You ain't going to even be able to say nothing. You ain't going to be able to say, oh, I, I didn't do that. Get the book. <laughs> Go ahead. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. That means you can't die nowhere and escape God. You can, you can be drowned in the sea. You coming back. Go ahead. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Wait a minute. And death and hell delivered up the dead that were in them. What do you mean? You, well, he, dealt, he dealt with the sea, right? He said the sea, so some people drown. He said death. What does death mean? I mean, it means death. All of them dead. You, when you drowned, you was dead. But he, he's speaking. He kind of giving you different locations. You drowned in the sea. You coming back. You just dead. Just say somebody dead. You had people get blown to pieces. They not in the sea. They really didn't get a grave. They just dead. It don't matter. You coming back. People went up. They was doing that space stuff. Went up in the shuttle. They Where they at? They dead. They ain't buried nowhere. They ain't in the sea. Blown to pieces. God got their number. They coming back. Death. What about, he said, hell. Hell is the grave. So you can't die nowhere and escape God. So this is what he means. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Go ahead. And they were judged every man according to their work. Everybody got to get judged according to their work. And we going to let a pork chop eating preacher tell us we ain't got to have no works. And this is what the Bible saying you're getting judged according to. Go ahead. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Uh-huh. This is the second death. Wait a minute. This is what I told you. Hell going into hell. That's what it said, right? And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, which is hell. See, all... Hell is going to be in the lake of fire from now. In other words, all the bad stuff going to be here. You don't want to be there. That's where the trouble going to be at. That's where the suffering and torment going to be at. And it's going to be there forever. Won't be no trouble, death, hell outside of this place. But this place going to be here. Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. What did he say this is again? This is the second death. Oh, this is the second death. It is unlike the first death. It's a big difference between the first and the second death. The first death we can come back from, we will come back from it. The second death is eternal. This is the second death. How you going to water it down and he making it plain? This the one you want to say hell to the gnaw to. Go ahead. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Lake of fire, also called hell fire. If you're not in the book, that's where you're going to be at. And let's see how important it is to avoid. Keep your finger here in uh, Revelation. We're going to come back. Go right over to Matthew 5. We're almost done. Matthew 5. Let's show you terminology Jesus called the lake of fire, which is the second death. See, but we see, we saw, it's important to understand the different conditions of hell, or you wouldn't know why death and hell got cast into hell. You wouldn't know how that could be. Revelation 5 and 21, go ahead. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, uh -huh. thou shalt not kill. See, people want to do away with the law. No, the Lord is showing you the law is even magnified. He said he's going to magnify law making on. So the law is so important, 
you need to even live by the spirit of the law, not just following through with something. It needs to even be from the, from the heart. So he said, you have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou should not kill. Well, obviously, that's good. You shouldn't kill. But I'm going to enhance it for you, show you the real principles of it. What? And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Now, just, just by killing, you in danger of the judgment. We just read about judgment day, right? you in danger of the judgment by killing. Go ahead. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Wait a minute. This is how important this is, brother. So we got less to deal with this. See, we look at some of this stuff as small, how we treat one another. But like one of my teacher, brother Daniel, say all the time, hey, this is some of the big stuff, how we treat each other. This is the big stuff, really, because it's hard. And it's, it got to be big if he telling us, if I'm angry with you for no reason, because you could do something wrong and I can be angry. I just got to handle it right. But I can naturally get angry. Hey, that's understandable. I'm just going to deal with it the right way. But if you, if you haven't done nothing to cause me to be angry and I'm angry with you, do you understand he said I'm, you in danger of the judgment for that? That's serious business then. I mean, that's some big stuff right there. You might talk about the Sabbath and know about the Sabbath. That's a great commandment. But if you're doing this, you can be talking about Sunday Christians don't know about the Sabbath, which is true. But if you doing this, you still in danger. You can be here every Sabbath and doing this. That's what he said. You heard it was said, thou shalt not kill your danger. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Go ahead. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, uh -huh. shall be in danger of the council. Now you snapping on him because it don't matter what your brother do, you got to behave yourself like a servant of God. So you say Raka, which means kind of worthless or whatever, you in danger of, he said, the council. Go ahead. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Oh, but whosoever say, thou fool, in danger of hell fire. So he laid on the line. He talking. See, this is the hell that we must avoid. Hell fire. That's different from hell the great. See, hell the great, that's the first death. Hell fire is the second death. Let's read a little further. We are going back to Revelation 19, back where we was at. You should have had a marker there. 19 and 11. Now we're going to see when this location of hell fire is going to be introduced. Now that we know nobody is there yet. See, they lied. They made you think when, you know, when I was a child, they made me think Satan was in this place of hell where he Gonna be at forever that he was already there waiting on me to torment that. Boy, if you bad, you're gonna go down there with the devil. Satan not even down there yet. He won't get there until the end, till we get to judgment day. Matter of fact, somebody gonna beat Satan there. That's what's amazing, which is not unusual because you got many times, even in this life, that the real bad person, he, he's the last one to get punished. You know, the peons get it first. He got f people that fall, people that go, go to jail first before they get to the big huncho. Well, that's how it is with Satan. But he going to get it. Revelation 19. This is when Jesus come back. This is when this is all going to unfold, brothers and sisters. Revelation 19 and 11. Revelation 19 and 11 go ahead and i saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he doth judge and make war see this people don't tell you what jesus is doing when he come back this jesus the sky gonna roll back he bringing these angels with him and it says in righteousness he doth judge and make war he coming to take this world over in a nutshell but the same time skip to verse 17 
because we want to get to show you when hell fire is going to be introduced. The lake of fire. Go ahead. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, mm -hmm. come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Uh -huh. You're going to do a lot of killing. The Lord is when he come back from one end of the earth to the other at, at the battle of Armageddon. But go ahead. That ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains uh -huh. and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses uh -huh. and of them that sit on them Go ahead. and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, uh -huh. both small and great. So he said, you're going to eat the flesh of all these people, these animals that that's going to get killed when the Lord come. Go ahead. And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse. And against his army. People don't know these armies in this world are going to eventually fight Jesus when he come. This is simple in our Bible. Why preachers can't tell us this? Because they're too busy trying to collect some, some money, passing the plate around. So they ain't concerned about this. They're not letting us know none of this. And this is plain. An eight-year-old can read this and understand what it means and tell somebody. But the Lord got preachers to supposed to tell us they won't tell us nothing. He said, I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him to set on the horse and against his army. That's war against the Lord. Now the leaders, he going to grab the two top leaders in this world, especially on the western hemisphere, hemisphere side, and do what? Verse 20. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet. So this is like an emperor type man, the beast. This is a man, this beast right here. And the false prophet is, of course, the religious leader. All situated right now, coming out of Rome, because this is still the Roman Empire. The beast, see, this is in our Bible for us to know, brothers. And it's not really hard to grasp if we read it, put it with other scriptures. It makes sense. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet. That Roth, that mean work, the miracles before him. Because people want a miracle, Satan going to give them some in a little bit. People call themselves looking for a sign. But Satan going to give them some signs and they going to be believing a lot. That Roth miracles before him with which what? With which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. Uh-huh. And them that worshipped his image. Go ahead. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone these who both right it's two of them that's all brothers and sisters you are looking at the opening of the hell hotel <laughs> right here this is the beginning of this ultimate hell lake of fire it's, it won't happen until Jesus come back make war on this earth and he gonna kill up countless people with the first death that we know. But these men, are, these two men are so wicked. He tell you about, we're not going to read. I scratched it from the lesson because I knew it was going to be too long. But you can read about during a thousand years, people going to come up to the kingdom and they're going to visit the Lord and you're going to be able to see these two men in the fire for the thousand years. Flesh and blood will be able to see them in Isaiah 66. You can read that. Because they so wicked, the Lord not going to kill them the first death. He going to skip that for them and put them right in the second death, the lake of fire. That's what he's saying. Read it again, verse 20. And the beast was taken. Uh-huh. And with him the false prophet. Two men. Go ahead. That wrought miracles before him. Uh-huh. With which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. Uh-huh. And them that worshipped his image. What happened? These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Notice they not dead. It's death, but it's a living death. That's why he specified these both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And people say, no, nah, no, nah, you know, it ain't going to last. So if, if it wasn't going to last, they should get burned up in a matter of time and just be ashes. That's what some people tell the lie. God wouldn't burn you forever. Well, we see them getting burnt right here, right? They're getting put in the fire. It's they cast alive. Go ahead, 21. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse. Now everybody else is going to get killed the first death. They got the second death. Go ahead. 
with sore proceeded out of his mouth, mm -hmm. and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Now back, now they're going to get killed normally and the beast going to eat them. These two guys didn't get a normal death. They went straight to the second death. They were so wicked. God said, I'm not going to kill you, wake you up to put you in the fire. I'm putting you in the fire. Now, Revelation 20, go right to the next chapter. Because we're going to follow this through. Because once he put them in the fire, kill up practically everybody, he's going to restore some order to this earth. People talking about the law and order. Well, the Lord going to bring the law and order. He the one going to bring it. But he's going to kill up practically everybody to do it. Then it's going to be a thousand years of peace. So Revelation 20 and verse 6, at the same time, he's going to be to raise the dead, the righteous dead, I should say. He ain't going to get to the wicked dead until the end. The rest, you know, all the wicked. They're not coming back to a thousand years later. But go ahead, Revelation 20 and 6, go ahead. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. Uh huh. On such the second death hath no power. Uh huh. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Go ahead. And when the thousand years are expired. Okay, so when you come, those that come up in the first resurrection, they're going to reign with Christ a thousand years. See, Satan going to be out of action. So what we read, we skipped a lot. You can read it on your own. But because we could have went right into the 20th chapter. I'm just saving a little time. The, the beast and the false prophet got thrown in the fire. He killed everybody else. Then you go right into the 20th chapter. He had an angel grab Satan, not put him in the fire, put him in the bottomless pit, which means he just put him on hold where he can't do nothing for a thousand years so we can have some peace on this earth. So you got two men in the fire. You got Satan over here on the sidelines, and you got peace and harmony on the earth for a thousand years. That's what's going on. That's why verse 6 said, blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. Those that come up at the second coming of Jesus got it made. Notice it say too, on such the second death have no power. That's what we trying to avoid. So if you come in the first resurrection, you ain't even got to worry about judgment day or possibly going to the lake of fire. You can't go because you were straight right now. You were straight while you walked. I'm talking about straight up straight while you was on this earth. So, so we understand that you're going to have the prophets and all the people. And we got a chance to do what's right because we know it and be here if we die before the Lord comes. Some people going to get changed when the Lord comes because some people going to be living. But still, he said, on such the second death have no power, they're going to be priests of God in Christ and reign with him a thousand years. That's a long time. Time going to go on after Jesus come back. Go ahead. Keep reading. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. See, Satan was just in a temporary holding cell for a thousand years where he couldn't wreak no havoc. After a thousand years of peace, Satan going to get out. Now pay attention what happened to the beast and the false prophet in the 19th chapter? They burning, brothers and sisters, already. They open up the hotel. They the first visitors. And it's permanent. Go ahead. And she'll go out to deceive the nation. Now Satan going to go out, mess everybody up, especially the people in the east. He going to mess them up. Now Jesus on the earth, been on the earth for a thousand years at this time. Nothing but peace and harmony. Satan going to get loose and try the people, mess them up. Go ahead which are in the four quarters of the earth, uh -huh. Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Uh -huh. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about. See, the camp of the saints is going to be on the earth. Always. And that's what's going on right here. That's why Satan going to send these people over here. Compassed the camp of the saints about. And what else? And the beloved city. And what happened? And fire came down from God out of heaven mm -hmm. and devoured them. Go ahead. And the devil that deceived them. And was, the devil that tricked them, that deceived them, what's going to happen to him? Finally. Go ahead. Was cast into the lake of fire. And now he finally going to the lake of fire. Having been there, he been on the earth in a state of hell, but not hell fire. Now he going to the lake of fire. Is somebody already there? Read it again. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Uh-huh. Where the beast and the false prophet are. Oh, where they was? 
Well, they are. Well, they are. Because you don't burn up in this place. You burn and burn and burn. So they still there. This is a thousand years later. They are still there. Well, the beast and the false prophet are. Go ahead. And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. That's kind of long. Now, do that really mean they're going to be tormented day and night forever and ever? Isn't that what it said? How are we going to make something else out of it? You can't make nothing else out of that. That's why it's hell to the gnaw. Then you go right into what we read already, Judgment Day, and it's going to be determined where everybody else is going to reside at for eternity. But we read that already. Go to uh, Revelation 14, 14 and 9. Revelation 14 and 9. Go ahead. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice. Now, this is a straight-up warning again to avoid this place since it is eternal damnation, since it is torment day and night forever and ever. It's a warning beforehand, especially during tribulation, where they're going to be forcing you to do wrong and you don't want to do wrong because it will mean going to this place. He's going to explain it to you. So he said, the third angel followed with a, what he said with a loud voice. If any man worship the beast and his image uh -huh. and receive his mark in his forehead. See, we know this is coming soon, too. But if any man worship the beast or take the mark of the beast in his forehead or right hand or hand, go ahead. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. Uh huh. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels. Uh huh. And in the presence of the Lamb. He's going to be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Go ahead. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. Ever and ever. The smoke of their torment. That don't mean they didn't burn up. That mean they burning. Go ahead. And they have no rest. They, they don't have no rest. That mean they not sleep. They didn't get burned up. They don't have no rest. Go ahead. Day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Uh-huh. Here's the patience of the saints. Hey, you better have it. You better be patient and do the right thing. Even if it means dying now, giving your life up now. That's how serious it is. The Lord said, give your life up now so you don't go to hell later. Hell fire. Go ahead. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. That's right. And the faith of Jesus. See, those understand. That's why we know how important it is to keep the commandments. Because you're trying to avoid hell fire. Plucking your eye is not going to keep you from going. Even if you lusting and got eyes wandering after things they shouldn't wander after, your mind still could do that. So plucking your eye out wouldn't help. No, changing your mind is what to do it. Here's the page of the saints. Here are they to keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Both of them. Verse 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Ah, uh, see, if you die in the Lord for, for doing his will at this time, you blessed. Go ahead. Yea, said the Spirit. That they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Gotta have some works to follow you. Matthew 25. Two more quick ones after this. Matthew 25. Then we go into Luke and then Mark. Matthew 25. We're going to Luke 12 and Mark 9. Matthew 25. See, you gotta read the Bible to get a thorough understanding of the Bible. It's not enough to read a verse and talk, because you can tell all kinds of lies when you start talking. But if you keep reading the Bible, you're learning what the Lord wants you to know. Matthew 25 and verse 31, it's going to tell you again about the second coming of Jesus. Go ahead. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory. Here he come. Go ahead. And all the holy angels with and him. And he's bringing the holy angels. So he ain't taking you to heaven. He coming to take over. All the holy angels with him. Remember, we just read you go, people going to go to the fire. They're going to be tormented in the presence of the holy angels and the Lamb. All the holy angels coming with him. Go ahead. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. That's when he's going to rule this earth. On the throne of David. Go ahead. 
and before him shall be gathered all nations, mm -hmm. and he shall separate them one and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. That's judgment. He gonna judge the world. Go ahead. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand. That's where you want to be. Go ahead. But the goats on the left. Uh -huh. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father. That's what you want to hear. Come ye blessed of my father. Do what? Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. See, that's the good news. That's the way we want the story to end. But unfortunately, it's another side to the story. And it behooves us to read and know about that. See, we can't just read about the nice stuff, brothers. See, this is good. This is how, this how we all should want it to end. We need to strive for it in that way, lest we end up on the other side of the story. And it behooves us to read and know about it. So skip down to verse 41. Because we see he's going to judge everybody. And the people on the right hand who did what they should have did, they're going to get the good news. Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. But we got some people on the left hand. We cannot omit to see what happened to them. Verse 41, go ahead. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand. What are you going to say to them? Depart from me, ye cursed. I love everybody. Depart Come on, y'all good too. I just was a little late with y'all. I love y'all too. No. What'd he say? Read it again. Depart from me. You mean Jesus is going to say, get away from me? Mm -hmm. Get away from me. Depart from me. What are they? Ye curse. Ye curse. Where are they going? Into everlasting fire. How long a fire? Prepare for the devil and his angels. Everlasting fire. What can everlasting fire mean but everlasting fire? And it wasn't prepared for flesh and blood people like us. That's why our flesh and blood body couldn't make it. That's why we're going to die in this body and awaken in another type of body that can suffer like this if you've done wrong. See, it was made for immortals. It was made for the devil and his angels. And he know he going. He know he got a short time before he go. He not there yet. Two men going to beat him there. Into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. One more time. Verse 46. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment. Everlasting punishment. Go ahead. But the righteous into life eternal. That's where we want to be. Luke 12, Luke 12, and we're going to end the lesson where we started with that scripture I told you, brother asked me about early in the week, is that literal? It is literal. It don't literally mean pluck your eye out, but it literally means do whatever it takes not to go to this place, hell, fire. Luke 12 and verse 4, 4 and 5. Go ahead. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body. Now, this is a big statement, brothers and sisters. It's so important. This is why we read in Revelation when the mark of the beast is being dished out, those that don't make it to the place of safety, which is where we want to strive to be, the Lord going to leave some because he always do it because somebody got to warn other people. He going to leave some, but he going to leave some to die. And we have to know if we among them, we have to give our life up for God other than listening to these crazy people taking a mark where we're going to end up in the lake of fire. We have to be willing to give our life up. So he tell it, this is why he makes, see, this don't make no sense unless you start to learn what God's will is. It don't make no sense to the average person. Jesus mean this. What he mean? He said, and I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body. That's the nature of man to be afraid of dying, right? Especially somebody coming up to kill you. That's man's nature, but you got to get out of that because they will kill you for doing right 
and they will threaten you with killing you to get you to do wrong. So he got to tell you that. See, this is ugly too, but we need to read and know about it, don't we? Be not afraid of them that kill the body. See, just like Jesus' body got killed. They called his soul because it's one and the same, body and soul. His soul got killed and went to the hell. But he came back from that. He didn't fear that to the point where he won't do God's will. Be not afraid of them that kill the body. And what? And after that, have no more that they can do. See, that's all they can do is kill you in this life. But now, should you fear something? Let's see, verse 5. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. And you need to fear. Go ahead. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Oh, this is what you need to fear, isn't it? Why? You mean this is worse. It's got to be worse than you getting killed in this life. He said you need to allow them to kill you. Don't even fear that. Fear the one that can put you in this hell fire. This is what you fear. This is why it's hell to the gnaw. Mark 9, where we started, this is it. We're going to read it through because he gave you a couple of more analogies to go with the plucking out of the eye. Mark 9 and 42. Go ahead, read it when you get it. Go ahead. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. See, again, whatever they do to you in this life, the Lord going to get them. Vengeance belongs to the Lord. So we don't even have to worry about it. He said, I'm going to get them. I got all their number. I'm going to get them. That show you Jesus is not what we call. He not no cream puff. He not no punk at all. He is talking about. I'm going to do you so bad, it would be better if this stuff happened to you. What did he say it would be better? He said, if they offend one of mine, it would be better if a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. That's pretty rough. He said, that would be nice for you. That show you, boy, Jesus is dangerous. Who ever heard Jesus talking like this, though? It's in our Bible, but we ain't heard it because we got too many lying preachers. Go ahead. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. See, if your hand offend you. See, you think, oh, that's radical. He telling you to cut your hand off. He can't really mean that. No, he mean it. If the doctor tell you you got gangrene, we had cut it off to survive. When we hadn't done it, my grandfather, they started cutting on him. Didn't stop till he died. Cut a leg off over here. Cut a foot off here. But he let them do it because they say, you're going to die sooner if you don't let us do it. People do this all the time, don't they? To save their life, Jesus is telling you the same thing, but it's more serious. It's eternal. He's saying, save your eternal life. Again, all this shows us how dangerous this place is. That we don't want to go. And we didn't let preachers water it down. Oh, you, God wouldn't do that to you. Sound like he will, brothers and sisters. Jesus said fear, didn't he? Now he's saying, if your hand is the problem, cut it off. If that will help you, get an ax and chop it. But see, the hand not the problem. Even if you're a thief, the mind is the problem. You got to cut that out. You got to stop it in other words. He's saying, whatever it takes, you better do it. If the hand is the problem. Like one brother, I know he, he probably, years ago, I, this brother was listening to the word. I know he was dealing with some sodomite stuff. I could tell he had some little feminine ways. But he, but he asked me, he said, well, look, uh, is it, you know, so somebody that, you know, like hypothetically somebody else. If somebody's doing stuff like that, you think they could change? I say, they could change, and they got to change. They can, they can change. Somebody asked me this week, sister asked me this week, can, you know, because they say, if a man lie with another man as he lie with a woman, can, he shall surely die. Yeah, well, everybody's sin. Adulterer and adulteress shall surely die. But 
That's in this life. But while you living, you got a chance to repent and change that where you don't get the second death. You got a chance to repent. So he said, if your hand is a problem, if your hand offend you, cut it off. It, it is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having what? Than, to, than having two hands to go into hell. Than having two hands to go into hell. Go ahead. Into the fire that never shall be quenched. It's never going to get put out, brother and sister. He said, if you, if, if, if the scenario would work like this and you would enter into the kingdom of God like this, he's, with one hand, do it. But the good news is you, you're going to be whole when you get there. But if it had to be this way, he's saying, make it this way. Go ahead. Where their worm dieth not, uh -huh. and the fire is not quenched. See, you ain't going to die away from this, and the fire not going to get put out 45. And if thy foot offend thee. If it's your foot, go ahead. Cut it off. He mean it. It is better for thee to enter hawk into life. Uh-huh. Than having two feet to be cast into hell, uh -huh. into the fire that shall be ne that shall never be quenched. He said, "If you had to walk around with a crutch, with one foot for all eternity, that'd be better than going to this place." Go ahead. Well, their worm dieth not, uh -huh. and the fire is not quenched. Uh -huh. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. Now he using some very important body parts. He said, "If you got to give it up, give it up." That shows you how serious this is. Go ahead. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye uh -huh. than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Uh -huh. Where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name. He going to have some regular announcements. Our prayers that the eyes of your understanding were enlightened by today's lesson. DVDs and CDs of all our lessons are available. Please place your order in the offering box along with your donation and pick your DVDs and CDs up at the podium next Sabbath. Please tune in to that Kingdom Come television program, which airs in various locations. Please join us at our other study classes, question and answer Bible study, every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. via conference call line at 712-432-1620. Access code 609-910. Also stream live from our website, thykingdomcome7.com. Children's Bible class, ages 4 through 12, every Sabbath at 12 noon. Teen Forum Bible class, ages 13 through 19, every other Sabbath, Saturday at 5 p.m. If you feel you are ready to be baptized, please sign the baptismal list at the podium and or speak with Brother Wayne. Following is the dress code for our services. All clothing should be modest in appearance, nothing tight-fitting, Overly baggy, sagging, or revealing should be worn. Men are to remove hats and all hair covering, and women should wear hair covering such as a hat or scarf, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 1 through 7. If your young child becomes noisy during a lesson, distracting other members, please remove him or her to the TV monitor area in the rear of the class. Any tithes and or free will offerings should be put in an offering envelope and placed in the offering box near the podium. Pray for our strength as we pray for you. Until next Sabbath, peace. Peace. Okay, if nothing else, we're going to face the rules. I'm going to close out. We're going to have a little food, so I'm going to ask the Lord. Bless the food we're about to receive for the nourish my body. In Jesus' name, amen. Our Father which art in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtor. As we forgive our debtor. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. In Jesus' holy name we pray. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah! In Jesus' name. Amen. That's a, that's a classic right there. That's classic. <laughs> I said, but you're, yeah, yeah, yeah.